fantastic conference coming up. It is free and unashamed. Friends, uh, it's my pleasure to invite you to our uh, women conference free and ownership 2022. The theme this year is audacious living. God has called us not to live a small life, not to live a, a life that is meaningless, a life bereft with uh, fear and uh, shame and uh, intimidation. God has called us to a bold life. So, can I invite you to join us? So to come and listen, be empowered, be ignited, and be, be reinvented. And the date is 4th, 5th, and 6th of November 2022 at Good News Bible Church, second floor, Unit 4, Westmoreland House, Stores Lane, NW10, 6RE. I look forward to seeing you. Our guest speakers are Pastor Marjorie Asamoway and uh, Dr. Jan Obridge and myself by God's grace will be ministering to you live. The power of God will be so much heavy that you will never go home the same. The Lord bless you as I look forward to see you. Hello, everyone. Hello. God bless you. This is Pastor Chika Amadi, and this is the Pastor's Wife, uh, wife Talk Show on Faith World TV. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are so glad to come your way. As you can see, I'm here with uh, Apostle George Amadi, my husband by God's grace. Yeah, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> I love you. God bless you all. Amen. Uh, we pray today that God will meet you at the point of your need. And we're going to go straight into the important discussion that we have. Please get other people to watch. Get other people to watch along. The question today is, is it too late to have a godly marriage? Is it too late to have a godly marriage? You know, we know that a lot of men and women uh, uh, wish and desire, both married and unmarried. There are married people, we wish to marry godly men or godly women. And um, uh, married, already married people as well desire the same. And these are good desires. They are actually very good. But the issue is, why is it that it's just in, a, in people's hearts? People desire it. Why is it not being manifested? And also want to thank God for everyone who have been striving to build godly marriages, marriages that honor God. Everybody who desires to enter into a marriage that will make God happy. I really celebrate you. We thank God for your life. And we are also, we acknowledge that there are a lot of women, particularly, who have been doing so much to get their marriage working. They have paid so much price. They have struggled. They have all, done, all, all they could to build a godly home. But in the process, they have been broken. They have been let down. They have been disappointed. They have been betrayed. They have been left, you know. But I want you to know, if you are in that category, you are not alone. God sees your tears. And we pray for you that it will turn out for good very soon. Amen. That there will be a turnaround in your relationships. Amen. But we also believe that Jesus says, follow, if you believe in me, follow me and carry your cross. And our cross come in different ways. Some people carry some cross of persecution. Some it could be lack. It could be anything. Some people it is marriage. So I believe that you should fight for your marriage. No matter how stressful it is now, no matter the challenge that is go going up there, fight for your marriage. The devil is after marriages. The Bible say we should, says we should fight a good fight of faith. So I want to encourage you, if you are struggling in your relationship, if there is problem in your marriage, do not give up, do not give in. 
keep fighting. It is a fight. It is a faith fight. Because when we get to heaven, God is going to ask us That's about right. our marriage, what we did in our marriage. So God is interested in your prosperity, child of God. God wants you to marry uh, a godly man, and a, or if you're a man, a godly woman. And God wants you to enjoy your marriage. But also God expects you to do something. So having said that, I want us to establish perspective, uh, Apostle. Yeah. Uh, who is actually a godly spouse? Is it a spouse that, uh, that is a saint, that is perfect, uh, the one that has no fault, or what? Well, that's, uh, thank you, uh, viewers, for joining this uh, broadcast, and I believe that God's going to bless you. Thank you for that question. Uh, for me, a godly spouse is a spouse that has the fear of God. Mm. It, it's, okay. it, has, uh, it's, it, it's, it has nothing to do with perfection, but mm. it has all to do with the fear of God, because the Bible says that the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Mm. So once you have somebody that fears God, and has God in their life mm. and considers God in everything they do, then that, that makes that person godly because that means mm. the meaning of fearing God is that you take you know, into consideration the opinion, what will God say in this matter yeah. before you do anything. Yeah. And so even if that person is not perfect, that's why I said it has nothing to do with perfection. Mm. Even if that person is not perfect, that person person can is can be corrected that person can repent that mm. person can change mm. that person is flexible and malleable in mm. the house in the hands of god okay. so to me that is what i would consider as a godly spouse mm. a person who will lead you closer to god and not further away from god mm. okay yes. oh fantastic that is it that's the perspective right here because um a lot of people when they talk of i want a godly home they think that it's uh, they want to marry a saint somebody that has no fault somebody that cannot make mistakes no that's wrong the bible says that no one is righteous except god it's only when we come to jesus that we receive the gift of being righteous so the first thing is what man of god said to be right with god so when you are asking of a godly home, you are asking of a, 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 a spouse who honors God, who reverences God, so that they have a conscience. They have that conscious, consciousness that whatever they are doing with you is also um, like doing uh, whatever they do to you is as if they are doing it to God. So they, they don't want to offend God. So that's what we are, who you are looking for. Where does this start? Is it, not, is it from when somebody is already married or before you get married? Well, it's important to get it sorted out from the very foundation. Mm -hmm. Because, you see, if you do not sort it out from the foundation, when you enter into it, you have problems. <laughs> so that's a, that's a big issue, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. Uh, they say that someone who has uh, who fetches a ant infested firewood mm. should be prepared for the visit of lizards. Oh my God! So <laughs> it's important that if you don't sort out something from the very foundation, mm. then you will begin to have issues in your marriage, mm. and then you start saying, "Oh, I didn't know. I, I wish I knew," and all those kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. So I believe that godliness starts from the very foundation. That is why I'm very particular about how people do their dating, their courtship, all these things. These are times to be able to discover the kind of person that you want to go into the marriage with. It's like partnership in a yeah. business. Yeah. If you want to go into business with somebody, you want to know the person's potentials. Mm. You want to know the person's pedigree. You want yeah. to understand what the person is bringing to the table in terms of, does this, is this person coming into my business? Are we going to be able to to work things together with okay. this business be profitable. Yeah. The same thing in marriage. Before you go and say I do with somebody that you're going to live all your life with forever and ever, mm. you need to make inquiries. You need to, you know, those days mm. in the olden days, our forefathers that didn't know God, yeah. they used to make inquiries. Mm. And this is uh, very important. They want to be sure that the family they are marrying into, yeah. that uh, they can cope with that family, mm. that doesn't have any issues, doesn't have any problem, does not have criminal record. So CRB checks started right from the olden <laughs> days. It's not today, it started. 
started. Okay. It's just that those days they did not use police to go and <laughs> or use database. Yes. But they went and did their own investigation. It's true. The same thing, a believer will be foolish to go into a relationship with somebody who does not know anything about. Mm -hmm. You don't know their stand on righteousness. You don't know their stand on faith. You don't know their stand on certain things. You must investigate mm -hmm. and be sure. So because a serious marriage is a very, very serious matter. It is. Yes. Wow. That is, you have had it. So for me, that's how it started with me. Before I got married to my husband, I believed that. Uh, I decided that, God, I want to have a godly home from the beginning. And so I started looking out for that. I started praying about it. And I had to prepare myself to ensure that I was godly as well. That's right. I had to prepare myself to make sure and search within me that I was, on, I was truly born again. I was truly in love with God. So, so that it's not that one person, you are waiting for somebody else to be godly mm. while you are ungodly, mm. isn't it? Ungodly. So, so it means starting with oneself. How do yes. we start that journey with oneself? Well, you have to. Somebody once said that if you, if you are looking for a prepared person in marriage, you have to prepare yourself first. Yeah. So it's very important yeah. that you need to be very prepared in a relationship. Yeah. Because, you see, if you do not take your relationship seriously, yeah. the person that is coming to you is a kind of, uh, they say, beds of the same feather flock together. Absolutely, yes, yes, yes. Your state of mind will determine the kind of person you attract. Mm -hmm. If you are prepared, fully prepared, and saying, God, give me the right person, God will bring somebody that is also equally prepared to you. Mm. But if you are the anyhow, anyhow, anything goes kind of Christian, yeah. you are likely to meet the anything goes kind of Christian mm. as well. Mm. Before I went into marriage, yeah. uh, which is with you, yeah. I have been <laughs> praying and praying yeah. and praying. And a lot of people came, there were a lot of options, but because I knew what I was looking for and I was praying and asking God for direction, you know, I a lot of there was a lot of within. You know, it's like when God sent Samuel to go and uh, anoint uh, a king in Eli's house. Yeah. And he saw so many that looked like the king. He, looked, he saw the brothers of David. They were mm. looking bigger, yeah. finer, yeah. taller, stronger. Yeah. Yeah. But God kept saying, this is not the one. This is not the one. So it is when you are prepared, God will lead you to the right person. Mm. God will definitely lead you because God is not unrighteous. He's, he's, he, will, he will not deceive you. God will not allow you, after preparing you, take you to the wrong person that will destroy your destiny, destroy mm -hmm. So that preparation is very important. And getting God involved in righteousness yeah. is also very important. Thank you so much. Thank yes. you. That is very crucial. So that is the fundamental. First, you have to get yourself ready. Make sure that you have a true relationship That's with right. God, that God is indeed your father. And you have to trust him that he will give you, you know, that he will help you to vet and give you the right person. The person who will fulfill purpose with you, the person who will love you, the person who will accept you the way you are, whether you are loud or you are quiet, the person will be happy with you and love you the way you are. So the first is to prepare yourself, then believe God. The man of God, I discovered that at times when it comes to marriage, a lot of people uh, uh, get very impatient, and so they just see, uh, 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 they just saw at a time, they make up their mind that whosoever comes my way, I will just follow the person. That's a big mistake. Very, very big mistake. Okay. You know, uh, mm. it is better to remain single than to go into the wrong marriage. Absolutely. I believe it. It is better to remain single. Mm. Singleness is not a curse. Mm -mm. But getting married to the wrong person can be a curse. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have died because they entered the wrong marriage. Yeah. A lot. You know, there is this woman in uh, Nigeria that everybody celebrates, a singer, yeah. that died not too long ago. Yeah. The simple reason was wrong marriage, wrong relationship. You know, entering into a relationship where you are abused, mm. entering into a relationship where you are not appreciated, yeah. entering into a relationship where your potentials are caged mm. and destroyed, yeah. entering into a relationship where you are not valued, mm. entering into a relationship where it looks like it's a competition, yeah. entering into a relationship where there's a fight every day. Yeah. I mean, that is a it's, a, it's like a prison. It's worse than being in prison. It's mm. better that they sentence you to 10 years of life imprisonment than for you to enter into such kind of relationship. Oh. So it's better to wait on mm. God. Wait on God. 
pray, prepare yourself, position yourself, and the right person will come. But do not rush into a relationship. Do not take anybody that comes just because you feel that time is going. Yeah. Because if you rush into it, you will either rush out of it or die in it. Mm. And that is not the will of God for yeah. you. Yeah. So it's important waiting. You know, they say the patient dog eats the fattest bone. Yeah. When you wait, you will surely meet the right person. The mm. right person will come. Mm. Especially when you are a child of God. God will direct the right person to you mm. at the appropriate time. Mm. Amen. Amen. But Pastor, there are some people who, who will say, or who have also experienced with that, look, I prayed, I waited, and I thought mm. the person God gave to me was godly. But behold, they turned out the other way around. So people will want to know, how do we really recognize? How do we recognize that person who is actually godly? What are the signs that somebody is godly indeed? Well, the, the thing is, marriage is a combination of both the physical and the spiritual. Okay. Because marriage is not only spiritual, it's yeah. also physical. Yeah. That's the reason why we do native law and custom, mm. and then we go to church yeah. to wed. Okay. It's a combination of you are marrying families, mm -hmm. apart from yourself, you have the family of that, the other person is involved, and yeah. so many things. So how do you know someone that is godly? It's not just only, marriage is not just only about the godliness alone. Okay. Some people just go for godliness, somebody that's spiritual, or oh, I want somebody that can pray. And then you finish, after you find the person that can pray, but the person does not know how to cook. The person does not know how to take care of children. The person does not know how to be clean mm. and all those kind of things. So at the end of the day, you describe that you married a prayer warrior, but very dirty at home very, uh, you know, distractive and mm. those things. So it's a combination. Archbishop Benson Idahosa said mm. something yeah. when I was a student yeah. in the university. I had him preach. And he said, when you want to marry, he said, remember the scripture that said, watch and pray. <laughs> okay. I will never forget that yeah. analogy. Yeah. He said, so when you are looking for a wife, while you are praying with one eye closed, one eye should be opened. Mm. And he analyzed it. He said, what that means is, while you are looking in the realm of the spirit that God, I want a godly wife, you should also open your eye to see if this person meets what you are looking for. Okay. It's very important. That is one of the reasons why in my uh, book uh, on marriage, mm. uh, on courtship, and other Ten Commandments of uh, dating, dating, I said there that one of the things you look out for in relationship is compatibility. Okay. And compatibility is not only spiritual. Yes, the person has to be compatible with mm -hmm. you in the realm of the spirit mm -hmm. because if you are a Christian, you cannot marry a Muslim. Yeah. It's a no-no. If you are a Christian, you cannot marry a Hindu yeah. or a Sikh. There will definitely be conflict. Yeah. That You are already setting yourself up for conflict from day one. Yeah. If you are someone that, uh, you know, you, 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 you are looking for somebody that is compatible with you, you must find something Somebody that is like like if you if you like going to church, you like go to worship God. You must find somebody that also loves God like you. It's very important. The so passion. The passion is very important. Then you describe is this person is it compatible with me in other areas as well? And then by the time you discover, look at the things you love doing mm. and find out can you carry this person along in your journey of life. Because if the person is a drag to your journey of life, yeah. the person does not like the things you like, the person does not like your parents, mm. you do not like their parents, how are you people going to coexist? I mean, the person wants to have uh, one child, you want to have four children. At the end of the day, people are already having problems from the very beginning. Mm. The person likes, you know, buying flashy things, very expensive things, and you, you like moderate things. Yeah. How are you going to? Mm. These are problems that, that's why courtship is there. Mm. That is why, uh, what do you call it, now, dating is mm. there. Yeah. People going, but a lot, the problem we have in our generation yeah. is that many people go into courtship and dating, they don't even know what courtship and dating is all about. Mm. They think it's just to go outside, eat in the restaurant, and do other things. In fact, these days they think it's time for fornication and all those kind of things, which is terrible. Mm. And so they are setting themselves up for failure. No prayer, nothing at all. 
So if you remember when we before we got married, we were praying. Yep. Uh, always praying, and before we even got married, God gave us the names yep. of our children. Yep. God gave us the how they were going to the gender, everything. God told us how they are going to be born yep. because we knew what we were looking for. We prayed and believed God, and God gave that. This was before marriage, yep. before we were married. Yep. But a lot of people don't understand courtship today. They mm -hmm. just courtship for them is playtime, playing mm -hmm. around, and they don't understand. Courtship is a time you lay foundation. Mm -hmm. solid foundation mm -hmm. for your marriage. I pray that God will give you wisdom as you listen on this issue of relationship because godliness is very important. Yeah. But at the same time, you need to also find that compatibility is also very important. Mm -hmm. A man of God wrote a book and he said, love is not enough. Mm -hmm. And I read it. Initially, when you look at the title, it looks confusing. But when I read it, that's where he talked about compatibility. Yeah. And I am one of, I am a believer in compatibility. Yeah. Love is not just enough. Mm. You cannot just so be, there are people that claim they've loved each other. Look at celebrities. Yeah. A lot of celebrities that are madly in love with each other, they do celebrity weddings. Thousands are spent, millions of pounds and dollars are spent, mm. but sometimes the marriage does not last up to one year. Yeah. That's to tell you that actually love is not enough. Mm -hmm. So some people will just say that because they're in love, they rush into marriage. But they can't, they don't take time to look whether they are compatible to live with each other. Yeah. It is those people that are compatible that are able to spend, you see them celebrating 25 years marriage anniversary, mm -hmm. 50 years marriage anniversary, 70 years marriage anniversary. Look at the queen and the husband. Yeah. How many years marriage anniversary before the queen died? Yeah, I mean, something, it, it's amazing. It's mm. amazing. That is what we are talking about. Yeah, yeah. So that is so true. So it starts from the beginning, not when you're already there. So it starts from the beginning. You know, one of the things I notice is that when you meet somebody, your heart goes with them yes. immediately. You don't see their fault anymore. So if you want, you say, well, I don't know how to know whether this person is actually godly. Ask your pastor. That's right. The pastor will look at them from pure perspective there because they are not attached. Unbiased. Unbiased. Ask your parents. Ask your brothers. Not the sister that does not tell you yes or no. The one that will tell you, sister, run. Or sister, that is true. You know those friends. You have different types of friends. The one that will tell you exactly the truth. Yes. Let somebody else look at the person and come back. Let them gauge them and tell you. Listen when people uh, advise you on uh, what you're looking for. Now, Pastor has said it, you need to ensure that this person is godly. Now, Pastor, time is running so quickly. I want you to just touch base on maybe somebody who is already in marriage. They are already suffering and they say, Lord, I have already made the mistake. We know our God is a God of second chance. How can they come back and make that marriage godly? Well, there is nothing impossible with God. Yeah. You know, a, a young man of God said, what God cannot do does not exist. Yeah. And I love that cliche. Yeah. You know, it's very important for us to understand that God can change any circumstance, any situation at all. Yeah. Very, very important. Exactly. So when the situation has already gone sour, mm -hmm. you bring it to God. Mm -hmm. You know, there was a there was a, a story in the Bible where sons of the prophet came to Elijah and said, ah, the water that we are drink we are supposed of drinking has been polluted yes. is bitter. Yeah. And Elijah prayed over the water yeah. and said, okay, he threw something inside it and said, go and check again. Yeah. And then the water was sorted out and they began to drink. And so that shows, even in, in marriage in Canaan, Jesus mm. turned water to wine yeah. in order for the marriage not to be destroyed. Yeah. Now, at the end of the day, that shows that God can always intervene wow. in a situation, no matter how bad it is. Mm -hmm. So it's a matter of taking it to God in prayer, mm -hmm. take it to your pastors, take yeah. it to people that can agree with you in prayer yeah. and say, please join me in prayer on this matter. Then take the right actions, yeah. the right actions, because the Bible says that love conquers you know, all evil. all evil. If you take the right action, do the right things, mm -hmm. you will be amazed how things will begin to change. Amen. 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 Yes. So that is it. There is nothing that's too hard for uh, for God to do. Bring your relationship to God. The Bible says, cast all your burdens onto him for he cares for you. God cares for you. He delights in your prosperity. Cast the burden, but also be the light. 
that couple, that spouse, the man or the woman that is ungodly, that is unrighteous, you need to be the light. You need to be the salt. Let them see Christ in you. And that will pull them. Because you can pray all the prayers. You can do all you can do. If they don't see you manifesting Christ, you push them further away. Mm. So that is all time we leave us to do. Please check out uh, my book on, on Amazon, The Chemistry of Marriage, and my husband's book, Ten, uh, Ten Commandments, Commandments of, of dating. dating. So until we see you next week, Pastor, just say a word of prayer to, for somebody. Father, we thank you for everyone that yeah. has heard the sound of our voice. I pray for your marriage. It yeah. is well with you Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We'll see you next week. Thank you. We have a fantastic conference coming up. It is free and on a stage. Living. It's taking place at the Good News Bible Church in Wilson. And the dates are the 4th, the 5th, and the 6th of November. Looking forward to see you there. Come and be blessed. Amen. Friends, uh, it's my pleasure to invite you to our uh, women conference free and honor chef 2022. The theme this year is audacious living. God has called us not to live a small life, not to live a, a life that's meaningless, a life bereft with uh, fear and uh, shame and uh, intimidation. God has called us to a bold life. So, can I invite you to join us? So to come and listen, be empowered, be ignited, and be re reinvented. And the date is 4th, 5th, and 6th of November 2022 at Good News Bible Church, second floor, Unit 4, Westmoreland House, Stuart's Lane, NW10, 6RE. I look forward to seeing you. Our guest speakers are Pastor Marjorie Asamoway and uh, Dr.